Okay, good, uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody, depending on your time zo uh, zone. Welcome in the Global Lecture Hall. Today we have uh, a very uh, interesting session. We have three <coughs> guest lectures, all, more or less all on the topic uh, of the day, which is, uh, um, well, if you want, it is overall the topic of, of all the lecture, and it is morphological computation, self-organization of behaviors, and adaptive uh, morphology. We will have uh, three uh, lectures, uh, one from Helmut uh, Hauser around 9.30 uh, uh, Central European time, uh, one uh, from uh, uh, Alexander Schmitz from Vasida uh, Uni University, and one uh, from Sabine Howard. I will give you some more detail uh, when uh, we pass to the, when we, I will introduce you to the lecturers. So the topic of today is, as usual, uh, so if you want, we, we go a little bit deeper in, in the concepts uh, that uh, we have so far uh, introduced from the very beginning. So uh, we, what we have said is that uh, we are looking for a, a more uh, deep approach to robotics. Despite the fact that robotics is having, with the current technologies uh, and uh, scientific knowledge, um, approaches, a uh, remarkable success. So what we essentially say is that uh, uh, this mechanistic approach was already present, uh, in, exploited in robotics from the very beginning. So this state automaton was, in, in the 16th century, in, like, using this picture, was uh, uh, implemented with a pull, uh, with gears uh, and, and belts uh, and other uh, levers. Uh, why well, now it is implemented in microprocessor or in, even in complex uh, uh, multi-parallel execution processor. But the idea is the same. A state machine is connected to the physical system with some feedback. As told, this approach is, is already uh, extremely successful. So we, we expect uh, we, we growth uh, in, in the industrial, industrial meaning industrial and service. So Robotics products, uh, and this I told you many times, uh, is probably a conservative estimate. We expect a growth of 8-9% uh, per annum. But as told, uh, we think this is the second wave. So we have the first wave, which is putting uh, good old-fashioned uh, welding robots everywhere. The second phase is now giving sight to those robots, giving uh, Tact, uh, optics to, uh, to the robots, giving some kind of basic intelligence by machine learning uh, and AI. And this is the, what we call the second wave. What uh, really is, may uh, has the potential to completely and uh, radically, um, um, let's say, um, respecting the promise uh, of robotics uh, is the, the third, what we expect is the third wave. So we're bionic. Uh, morphological computation, self-organization, simplexity, new materials. We have a tremendous need of new materials. will allow an animal-like intelligence in robot. So we, we just as a recap, we have, we have seen that, that, uh, uh, that the good old fish and AI, as we call it, you know, uh, go fi um, it's based on this uh, mechanistic uh, concept of a cognition as computation. Uh, we are now exploring, and we will explore briefly in my lecture, and uh, you, you also in all the free guest lectures today, the idea of a cognition emergent from sensory motor interaction processes. Now, we, we put the uh, frame of reference problem as a main issue with COFI. Actually, in the last lecture, we will congratulate the single person that so far was able to spot that two lectures ago, for some reason, the frame of reference issue was not quoted. 
And, and then we know that on the other side we have a similar grounding problem. So it's not so easy to implement, uh, so to put label on things by abstracting from, from a, an inner flow of many, many, many data. Uh, a key point is uh, the uh, idea that the in intelligent system is not uh, a disembodied as abstract program. So the natural system that we know are actually embedded in an environment and actually are physical systems. No? And the uh, a typical uh, Foyt uh, concept is the Mazano told us fungus eaters. So this is uh, maybe you don't like that environment, but uh, is uh, a system with a, a, an environment, and uh, this make uh, a difference, no? Because, uh, um, for instance, ticks, ticks uh, uh, live uh, in, in, you know, the animals that, uh, the parasite animal that you can find on dogs or other uh, pets or, or wild animals. So these ticks have a very simple. Uh, perception of the world. We understand if they are touched and if they smell fats, or if they are, they are let's say, on the ground. No? And this is a very super, super um, simple world. Every, um, every, every, um, every living agent has actually the kind of sensory equipment uh, which uh, is uh, fit uh, for the behavior goals of that system. And the behaviors are those that, uh, in uh, the natural world, uh, those that uh, uh, allow the survival uh, of the species. Uh, so, and this is what uh, I, so, because there is a subtle uh, change from uh, because we, have, we, we say this uh, all the time that uh, we have actually two main goals. One is scientific and is the reverse hearing of uh, and call it animal intelligence. The other is to exploit those principles to, uh, to build uh, the third generation robot. And as I told, there are at least three because it is slightly different, no? because the animals that we see are those that for some reason emerged from, uh, from evolution. We would like to, 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 to build a, um, purpose, purposeful agents, so agents doing something that we think is useful for us. No? So in, in this idea, we, the ecological niche is, as in natural intelligence, uh, a key uh, necessary. The second point is desired behaviors and tasks. This is a, a main difference because we are talking about uh, design. So uh, what I want to do with this system, just cleaning the, the floor, um, exploring a, a moon of Saturn, so the object like system like the, Maza, the fungus eater. No? Uh, because the, I also the idea of, of a fungus eater actually you, has been implemented because uh, if you think about, if you want uh, uh, long term, uh, an agent which is able to explore, for instance, a, fl a forest for a long time, it needs a fuel. And uh, it taking the fuel from, the, um, from fungal mushrooms or other plants makes sense. A similar approach may uh, work with a uh, um, system exploring a, a faraway planet. So if we want that this exploration lasts for tens of years, you will need to have a possibility to find the, the fuel on, on site, which is, by, by the way, what every um, animal does. And then the design of agent. Uh, the example that we did many times, the comparison now versus cor corner ranger. Now is useful to, for, to do many things uh, for doing many things, um, from if the only uh, benchmark, the only performance criteria is uh, consuming less energy, there is no comparison with the careful design of a corner ranger and the other passive worker. And then, 
Uh, this is a, a work uh, that they are similar work. Now it's also kind of commonplace. Uh, the fact that uh, um, when we in, uh, want to uh, explore our environment, we usually manipulate it. So the, our capability to, uh, uh, if I see this, I know what is it, no? because I saw it before. But if I look at this uh, object in this direction, or in this direction, or this direction, is different. No? Because uh, here it could be a stick, uh, a plastic black stick. Here, well, strange object, I don't know what, for, for what is it. But here I see that, the, I hope you see, that there are buttons. Ah, so this is a remote control. <coughs> And now I can understand it. Now, uh, another thing that uh, was um, in, in the previous lecture uh, on evolutionary, on evolution and uh, development, uh, or, uh, developmental learning. Actually, uh, I, I'm quite old. I've been decades on this planet. So the fact that I do these things extremely easily uh, is the, the final effect of uh, a, a lot of trials and error that I started to do when I was a, a few months old. Uh, so this developmental, and uh, when I was a few months old, old my uh, genes and the structure of my brain already uh, implemented a knowledge that uh, has been uh, um, accumulated by the evolutionary process in, well, you, you know, no? Lit literally billions. So, but manipulation, so the interaction, what we are talking to today about is the fact that uh, perception is not taking a picture, so it's also that, no? Uh, think to uh, the most successful application of deep learning techniques is uh, picture analysis, no? because uh, um, it's a problem that you have, no? but, uh, that is, you are starting to have, if you do the sim the simple experiment, you can do it yourself also now. No? Uh, the simple experiment of looking for pictures in, in, into Google, the, the main problem with pictures is that uh, you, 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 so the obvious no? is that you write a, a string of letters, a description of a picture, and you look in a database where many pictures have been tagged, so they have some string associated, but many have not. So if a system wants to give me all the pictures of blue balls, it has to be able to detect into a picture, so into a matrix of pixel, it has to be able to understand that that's a picture. We know that it is not so easy, right? In a, a real agent, uh, a real agent, sorry for, in an embodied agent working in a real environment, something can be simplified. In this case, is this a piece of black piece plastic with no apparent purpose, or is this a remote control? What I have to do is uh, turn it upside. And this is the basic. In this uh, work by Meta and uh, Fitzpatrick, I think it's 2008, um, it has been shown how the, this possibility actually makes perception much faster. So this is another lesson learning is that this robot that they used to do the test was a robot built in the same way of now or Asimov, so it was a fully actuated uh, a fully actuated robot implementing standard AI um, perception algorithm. So, but the, the um, idea of, of the interaction of the environment as a, a, an important aspect of understanding the environment uh, was exploited. This is a way to say that uh, um, these concepts that we are uh, pushing here are not uh, um, Let's say you, you, you don't have a kind of uh, by, um, step situation, no? that, meaning you don't use any concept until the science has been completely clarified, and then you start to build robots completing another. No, as Meta and Fitzpatrick did on the ICAB, as uh, the group, Plymouth group is doing on the ICAB, 
and other groups are doing on other platforms, uh, you, you can already apply many principles, of, of course, with a limitation of materials that you have and the system that has been developed so far, because this is not uh, a secondary point. Uh, so building a platform requires time and, and, and funding. So there is also a, a delay in the implementation of a concept. Uh, so what the, just a, a, as a recap, what uh, we, we, we expect from an intelligent recap, uh, point out some principle that if you want to implicit but not um, explicitly formulate. No? So we first imagine from system involvement interaction. So this behavior is not the same. So mm, my briefing behavior is only possible in air. No? Um, it is, and it is a regulated behavior. No? So I, we, you know that you, we have a RIP in briefing. No? So when we, because when we talk, uh, um, because some people that I don't know, but some Swiss uh, uh, researcher, not Rolfe, say, observe that we are already talking about humanoid. But do you know of any humanoids which has a kind of griefing behavior? Or, um, so, I mean, uh, we are quite far from there. No? Then, what happens in nature is that we have uh, a large number of parallel loop processes. The cell. Remember the video of the cell. It's everything going on by its, itself. It is usually asynchronous. While well, we, we tend to design robots, which respect uh, uh, asynchronous uh, behavior. And uh, okay, we have this, this uh, kind of thing. The uh, parad paradigm implementation of this was referred to a very old paper, which, if you want, uh, is the scientific seed of Arumba. Huh? So, the, in 1984, Rodney Brooks, in a paper on, uh, at, at an Interpoli journal uh, dedicated to, uh, I think, to robotics, uh, but uh, I think it was the previous. Uh, journal to the transaction, implemented this uh, behavior, uh, this, this subsumption architecture. What's a subsumption uh, architecture? Uh, in the, um, to, until that time, the, uh, the idea was that uh, cognition was a kind of, uh, again, mechanismic mechanism. Now, right now where you have perception, modeling, planning, acting. So, First I perceive, then I have some homunculus in my brain which analyze what I perceived. On the basis of what I perceived, I design a plan, and finally I act. No? Is, uh, and this can be compressed to sense, model, plan, act, or sense, think, act. So the idea is that there is someone in your brain, and, and you, you see where is the problem. No? I want to study um, intelligence, and I assume that very I actually gives the basic uh, uh, intelligent behavior to some uh, agent uh, that I put inside uh, without saying how it is done. The behavior-based uh, or uh, approach of this assumption in, in architecture assume that you have several parallel behaviors, which uh, and that the problem is to prioritize those uh, parallel behaviors. In the case, and you may recognize if you have seen a room by action, no, one is exploring, uh, the other is collect object. In the case of a room by uh, collect that, avoid obstacle, so the legs of the chairs or the tables, and move forward. No, the room by basically move, do a random work on your floor. Uh, like um, following a gradient of, uh, of dust, where if there is more dust, it goes in that direction. If there is an obstacle, it bumps back. But all these behaviors are uh, acting concurrently, so in parallel. So you don't have uh, uh, a brain in the room. This idea was initially proposed in robots like this Genghis. Hmm? And uh, um, actually, uh, think about that, it became uh, an industrial product some 20 years later. Huh? 
hopefully in the future we, we will be able to be faster um, we, we, so to, to pass from the scientific discovery to the product in the last 20 years. But that was happening and it's still uh, this is a very important uh, Interestingly, this approach, uh, other people like Olk Cruz, a German biologist, tried to apply this uh, uh, model to, to understand uh, the behavior of, the, uh, of real insects and what was, uh, was discovered is that actually the, um, this is what happened in, if you look at this uh, ant. Hmm? Uh, what he discovered is that uh, every leg, there is no central coordination, every leg coordinates the movement uh, with the other legs uh, using essentially the terrain as a medium to exchange information in between. Because if a leg uh, is uh, twisted, it means that the, the, um, so I, I, I send a signal which corrects the other one. Uh, it, it's, so it's just uh, but there is no intention and think about uh, how many times you 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 think about uh, how you work usually you don't huh? so at some low level this probably happens uh, in, in um, according to what usually happens uh, in um, in evolution it's very likely that many of these principles have been conserved also in higher level. For sure we, are, we, we don't think intentionally to brief, we don't uh, even, so for many, for a lot of time nobody knows what was going uh, on uh, into the stomach and all the other uh, regulated process, parallel process. So this subsumption architecture is very close to what we see in nature. Uh, and we implement it how? Because there is also, when we talk about uh, um, um, artificial agents, so in the Roomba is a set of programs running concurrently on the CPU. In the cell is many, many, many different molecules uh, loosely connected by metabolic pathways. Metabolic pathways means a set of uh, um, reaction between certain molecules but in, in what? At that temperature, have a higher probability to occur. So there are pathways now from a molecule to another one. So this is the principle. We implement it with what? Concurrent processes uh, into a uh, time shared CPU. Huh? But the principle is the same. And this is what, uh, uh, this is, a, a, I think, a, a, an important discovery by our Gruz what's happening in insects work. And then uh, let's talk about uh, being social. Mm? So this is Kismet. Kismet is a social interaction robot developed uh, years ago by Cynthia Wiesel and co collaborators at the Media, MIT Media Lab. So another lab from Brooks, which is the computer science and AI lab. Uh, but uh, applying the same principle, so how to simulate, hmm? yeah, you, you may remember last, uh, last Thursday uh, lecture, to simulate a socially appropriate behavior. And uh, if Nathan shows us the, Pretty funny person. No, this, uh, what is uh, relevant? Uh, Do you yeah, laugh at all? I laugh that a lot. This is a again a subsection architecture. Lot. Of course, uh, uh, it was uh, the topic of last lecture to to discuss, uh, um, okay. uh, and also in the first lecture, you know, in the example of the square chasing the triangles, no? Uh, it's a matter, of course, uh, uh, what does it mean to be socially appropriate? Uh, so to behave in a socially appropriate way. An example like this make to, seems to show that uh, it might be a set of reflexes. Uh, that we are used, we are, we are adapted to recognize uh, as a social cues. 
Of course, it's a completely different issue, uh, the issues that were touched in, in last lectures, which were if the system is conscious at all. No, not at all. The system react to my behavior in a way that uh, I am used to recognize uh, as uh, socially appropriate, uh, emotional also. Uh, but simulation of emotion and simulation of behavior are uh, different thing from the fact that I summon there. Uh, no, this is a nice example of simulation. About, okay. I think there's something here between But uh, for sure, we, uh, because this is, happens many times, and for instance, in self-driving cars. Of course, uh, now we use uh, conscious beings to drive taxis. But it's necessary to be conscious to, to, to go from point A to B in a city and, to, uh, by, uh, and in the meantime avoiding obstacles uh, and children uh, and people crossing out the street, but not necessarily. So here, the message here is uh, that many of our face pose uh, movement of body movement are, are actually, might actually be simple reflexes, uh, but we recognize, implement. Uh, this is a topic for a potential topic for a future um, student presentation is okay so you really think that uh, so w because more or less uh, we have not demonstrated we have shown that the substantial architecture proposed by Brooks may explain a lot of the behavior of insects uh, and so the, the very 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 natural questions is uh, hmm. so you think that in this way uh, by uh, putting lawyers and lawyers uh, of this kind of uh, emerging behavior uh, of, uh, of so lawyer or lawyer of substantial architectures, at uh, some point you will have something very similar to a, a man or a woman. Uh, what is, was interesting in your previous video is, well, in terms of uh, behaviors that I'm used to consider um, typically human, maybe yes. But it's a, an, a, it's a discussion. Uh, so you may go dig the literature and to say this discussion, because David Kirsch was essentially convinced that it was not a matter of uh, packing lawyers and lawyers of this kind of emerging uh, processes, but there was something more that this approach doesn't uh, catch. So this uh, it might be a nice, a nice um, presentation in, a, a few, in one of the two um, that we have. And then we have this very nice uh, example where we, uh, so we have seen three examples. The, um, the insects walking, kismet behavior, which seems extremely appropriate. And uh, now we are talking uh, about uh, how a dog works no? with an approach uh, which uh, is uh, the emerges from a complex di uh, dynamic. A, a, the principle are, so essentially we have some oscillation in the joint and we essentially exploit the morphological computation. This was done by Fumia Idia, then um, a student of uh, Rolf Pfeiffer at the uh, AI lab in Zurich. And now uh, in Cambridge, we, uh, we had a guest lecture from him uh, a, couple, a few weeks ago. And uh, this was a very nice thing. So is it possible to build uh, a puppet uh, working with essentially almost no control? So very much in, so a perfectly in line conceptually with the um, corner ranger. And now we may, uh, you may show, uh, Nathan may show Couple of videos. Yes, it is. So this um, this puppy on, on the treadmill is actually able to walk, and what it does is uh, it has a, a super simple control. So just oscillation at the joints at the hip. So a couple of joints. 
spring, we talked about material, spring-like material properties. So it is elastic, no? it exploits the elastic. It's self-stabilized, why? Because it has been designed for copying a real puppy, but to, in such a way that it can self-stabilize. It depends on, on where it is the center of mass, uh, how you have uh, designed the legs, where are the springs, so this requires a significant effort. But luckily we have dogs and we can try to take some inspiration. For me, I did that, and this is the result. So almost no control, a behavior which is much more natural than many other, the behavior of many other robots' dogs. Uh, maybe we can also see, the, um, if you look at, for a while to the, to the, to the slide you see, no? so you have the only oscillation is the one you have where you see the arrow, then you have springs in a couple of other joints, but the legs are passive. Uh, so, um, by the way, this mechanism that you see here with the treadmill and you, have, you see in insect walking is also called stigma G, which is the, the fact that you transmit uh, from leg to leg in some way, in a way that you can make more precise, you transmit a, a information from one to the other. Now, maybe you, you also have a slow motion video. So if you look at it uh, in, uh, in slow motion, you see what happens. No? So it's a very uh, chaotic and uh, random behavior, but it is appropriate and uh, our intuition tells us that it is very... Um, now I, I finish because I, I think I have already taken some minute more than necessary. So uh, more or less uh, uh, the... Um, what, what, what we are seeing here is a, a structure. The structure of Puppy is a kind of model architecture where I have the controller in animals, the central nervous system, a musculoskeletal system. I told you about material. So, you know, we, so we, if you think about the material design, is much more sophisticated than any material that you have seen in any sophisticated artificial end and the ecological niche. The treadmill, in the case of a puppet, uh, the, in the case of Simon Ant, and also real Ant studied by Olk Kruse, uh, the, um, the terrain where it works. And uh, this is a question, it may be for next time, because today we have, uh, but you can think offline about it and maybe uh, give your answer to, in this diagram, where, what's the, what are the most, which is the most important part and what, if you want, the less and the absolute, very, very, very least important. So, um, just uh, to finish here, when I talked about information, actually, this stigma, stigma can be given a, a meaning using, is, um, I cannot do it in one minute, using concept came from the communication, the, so the information theory, meaning the communication theory developed by Shannon. It can be shown that uh, there is a relation between the capability to manage uh, the predictive information the con connecting sensor to actuators and uh, appropriated intelligent behaviors. And uh, there are many ways to show it. There is uh, this paper that you may check, which is uh, Tana Vitalia's um, Transaction Robot in 2005. Also some work uh, more sophisticated show how actually um, the embodiment uh, influence the way information in channel sense flow. But, and just to conclude here, so um, our task is to understand system like this. And we do it by modeling them with some uh, very abstract uh, simulation model like this one on the left, or apparently cumbersome system like the puppy, or like this, which is the H-robot, which was a uh, 
um, very, very peculiar humanoid uh, developed in a um, European project uh, years ago, which actually is completely different. Uh, the nephew of uh, humanoid, of uh, the Cerobo, is a Roboy, which is a system still used uh, into the human brain project uh, in the robotics uh, section. You can, you had some, uh, if you listened carefully to Florian Rohrberg in, in his lecture, you, you, and you check the um, website of, of the Human Brain Project, you will see that this robot, robot uh, which is um, less ambitious and less chaotic and less messy than Etche, but more manageable, it is a valuable um, research tool. And with this, uh, uh, I, I, I finish. No? So actually, uh, there are different approaches to intelligence and robotics. As told, even this classical approach is quite successful. Uh, let's check the other ones. Uh, now I'm happy to, so from my side, now, and also you have. Um, so we would like something like this, uh, able to do the same cool things that we do with that. So I'm telling you this every time, but so now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Helmut Hauser. Ah, yes, yes, sorry. Um, so I'm happy to introduce the student presentation from Berlin. Thank you. We don't have any slides. So we um, give a short introduction of the video we want to show, and uh, from there it's, it's doing that. Yeah, we had um, an exercise this week at university to uh, try to build like an embodied robot in one and a half hours. So we had an Arduino each group and two motors and some glue to build it. Uh, yeah, and we had to figure out how we build a robot such that it locomotes as fast as possible, and we want to share our results with you and have a short video for that. Okay, great. And for those who remember, um, it was inspired by the embedded system from uh, several years ago, and now it's an improved version of Arduinos. And um, we will see in the video, it's a very um, beautiful robot that is very skillful as well.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you want to comment something briefly? So hi, uh, I want to comment hi. on this too. Maybe you saw me in the end of the video. Um, <laughs> um, so what I found very interesting about the project is uh, that the robots had some uh, had a kind of evolution, I think. So it wasn't real evolution, maybe, but we tried out many different things and we didn't plan so much, but we just uh, glued the stuff together and uh, tried out if it works. And our team thought the robot would go in one direction, and when we tried it out, it went in the other direction, pretty effective. So we thought, okay, um, works with the environment and was maybe a kind of evolution. And the second thing I thought was interesting was in the end when we left the room, um, there was a, maybe just for me, there was a bit of a kind of a um, connection to the robot which we built. It was not just a piece of glues and motors, but more like a creature which we created and had some kind of life in it, but just had a simple oscillating uh, servos. So this, this was interesting for me. Okay, and all that was done in just uh, two hours. So um, creating creatures in two hours. So uh, that was a pretty good uh, achievement. Okay, thanks. So we give back to um, Fabio. And uh, goodbye, everybody, and see you next week.